If you play the bass, Anthony Jackson is a name you simply must know. Born June 23rd in 1952, Anthony originally started on piano before moving to guitar and then eventually settling on the bass, and from there embarked on an incredible career which saw him work with Buddy Rich, Shaka Khan, Grover Washington Jr and Hiromi, to name just a few. However, his work with Michel Camilo, in particular the live big band album, is what's really caught my ear recently, because something that he plays on one of the tracks is just so perfect. Take a listen to how Anthony plays through the chords on the solos section of the song, Not Yet. The first chord of this section is an A-flat major 7 over which Anthony plays this. So we start off on the A-flat, we go through the ninth or 2nd B-flat, then we play the 3rd, 5th and back to the root. Then we get a C minor chord which Anthony anticipates by pushing into on the 5th G, then he walks from that G down through the C natural minor scale to the 3rd E-flat, then finishes off with a small fragment of C minor pentatonic from C to B flat down to G. Now whilst some of this is unusual and it does sound really cool, it is at the end of the day all fairly quite standard stuff. But the real magic, the most perfect thing that only he could have thought of comes over the next chord. Now this next chord is an F7 flat 5. And before we look at what Anthony played here, it's worth us taking a quick detour to discuss what a lesser bass player might have done, because this F7 flat 5 is a really difficult chord to play over. So most bass players would have likely played something like this. <laughs> a phrase heavily centered around the root note F. Now technically there's nothing wrong with playing an F over an F7 flat 5, it fits, it outlines the chord fine. However, when you start to think about how soloists might interpret this chord, the choice of F alone in the bass does present us with a few really practical problems. Let me explain why. An F7 flat 5 chord consists of two sets of tritones, one between the root note F and the flat 5 B or C flat, and another between the major third A and the flat 7 E flat. The presence of these two tritones means that the chord can either be interpreted as some kind of F7, which you get from the tritone between the A and the E flat, or as some kind of G7 chord without the root because of the presence of the F and B or C flat tritone. But it gets even more complicated than that because on dominant chords, jazz musicians, whether they're soloing or comping, will often throw in other substitutions like tritone substitutions. So in place of the F7 flat 5, we could substitute a B7 flat 5. In the place of the G7, we could substitute a D flat 7. Now we haven't covered all the available substitutions, but there's already four different chord options. So as a bass player, what do you do here? If you want to lean more towards the G7 side of this tonality, but the piano player comping along wants to go towards the B7 flat 5 side, but the soloist wants to go to D flat 7. If you tied your colors to the mask, put a G in the bass, for example, then the other options, like an F7 flat 5 with a G in the bass, does still work, but the presence of that G in the bass arguably commits this to being a G chord of some kind, and that would serve to undermine the superimpositions that the soloist or the comper might want to put in. So what's the solution here? Well, Anthony Jackson has it and the way he uses it here is what makes this bass line so perfect. Over the F7 flat 5, Anthony Jackson simply plays this. His line here consists of a B descending down a tritone to F, back up a tritone to the B, and then up a tritone again to another F. The genius of this is that no matter what chord the piano player, the guitarist, or the soloist wants to imply, his bass line works with all of them. Because when you look at the notes of all four of these chords, what they all have in common are that the B and F are not only present, those two notes are giving all four of these chords some level of functionality. The B and F work as either the third and flat seven or flat seven and third of G7 and D flat seven respectively. They're what make that chord dominant, but they also work as the root note and flat five or flat five and root note of F7 flat five and B7 flat five. In short, Anthony Jackson's bass line here describes all four of these chords but commits the soloists to none of them. 
and that is what makes this bass line so perfect. Now, whilst no one quite plays bass like Anthony Jackson, he isn't the only bassist out there to put these little hidden gems into his bass lines. If you wanna see what I mean, then you need to check out this video up here to see the most insane thing that Pino Palladino puts into a John Mayer tune. Thanks for watching, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you again soon.